Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video we're going to talk about how to determine whether a molecule is going to be linear, planar, or neither um, and indicating uh, what the hybridization of the central atoms are. So let's get into this. So uh, what you need to do to figure out whether a molecule is going to be planar or linear or anything like that, what the shape of it, um, you have to figure out what the bonds are like. You have to figure out, okay, do we have uh, sigma bonds, pi bonds? Uh, is there going to be rotation around the uh, axis where the atoms are bonded together? Is there rotation around that bond or not? And that's going to depend uh, basically on whether or not you have pi bonds uh, between those two atoms. Uh, pi bonds, if you remember, are uh, basically where you have unhybridized p orbitals overlapping. So you have um, these uh, occupied p orbitals on adjacent atoms, uh, and then you form a bond with uh, those unhybridized p orbitals, and that creates your pi bond, with, uh, which is uh, what occurs when you have your double and triple bonds. So double and triple bonds are where you're going to have pi bonds. And what happens is because you have those pi bonds form, those pi bonds are forming outside the axis of the atom. So if I could just draw kind of a picture of what that might look like. So here, let me draw a better picture. So here I have my two carbon atoms, let's say, and if there's an overlap of an orbital, like so if you have an uh, overlap of orbitals uh, between the axis, right? So here I have orbitals for these two carbons, right? So they are overlapping uh, between the two, the two carbons here. And so because it's along the axis between the two carbons, that is what we call a sigma bond. Now, these are going to be, they could be hybridized or non-hybridized uh, orbitals. Um, but here, what we're going to have is going to be a no, let me use a different color. I don't want to use black again. So let me use blue. So your P orbital is going to be perpendicular to the axis. Your unhybridized P orbitals are going to be perpendicular to the axis. So remember, you have your PY, your PX, and your PZ, and all of those are along different axes, the Y axis, the uh, the x-axis and the z-axis, and all of those axes are perpendicular to each other. So if you have an unhybridized p orbital on both of your adjacent atoms, uh, they can form bonds. So if you have electrons in here, then they can pair up and they can form a bond that is outside the axis. So they're not, it's not directly between the two atoms. So this would be your axis. And so you can get kind of an overlap here on that side, on the top here and on the bottom. And because of this overlap, that's going to, uh, that's not going to allow any spinning along the bond axis here. Right. So if these if these were here, then you can get free rotation around the axis between the two, the two atoms along this sigma bond here. But because of the pi bond here, this overlapping of the unhybridized p orbitals, that is going to lock the the uh, molecule in place, the atoms in place. So that's not going to allow the rotation because if you try to rotate this, then you're going to stretch this electron density here and here, and you're going to kind of pull it apart. That's not going to be favorable. That's going to be high energy. And so that's not going to happen, right? So this is kind of stuck in place. So that's what we want to look for in the molecule to see, okay, where do we not have free rotation? Where do we have free rotation? 
And so that's going to determine what atoms are going to be in the same plane and which atoms are not necessarily going to be in the same plane. Okay, so now that I have that out of the way, let's go to A now here. You see that we have a double bond. And so what you want to see here is um, you've got chlorine bonded to the carbon here. You got chlorine bonded to the carbon. And then you got a carbon bonded to the carbon. So the rule that you want to remember to figure out hybridization is that the number of atoms and lone pairs total that you have around your central atom is going to be the number of bonds you need to kind of mix together and hybridize to get your uh, to get the enough of the hybrid bond orbitals that you need to to uh, uh, what should I say um, take care of those bonds and those uh, lone pairs because those lone pairs and the bonding pairs of electrons have to be in uh, orbitals somewhere. Uh, so the rule is, is that the number of atomic orbitals that you need to make the same number of, is going to be the same number of uh, the uh, uh, hybridized orbitals that you need, right? So, and that's going to be de dependent upon or determined by the number of atoms and the number of lone pairs total. What are the total number of electron groups you have around your central atom? So here, again, you treat double and triple bonds as if they were single bonds uh, when it comes to groups. Like if you're counting the number of groups, uh, the double bond here does not count as two groups. It just counts as one group, right? So this is one group. This is one group. This is one group. So this carbon has three three groups. So that means three hybridized orbitals. Those three hybridized orbitals are going to be coming from the, uh, the atomic orbitals. And we always start with lowest energy to highest energy when we're adding orbitals. So we've got the S, the P, we have three P's, right? And we've got five D's. And so what we're going to do, right, is starting with S, we're going to count the number of uh, atomic orbitals we need to make our hybridized orbitals. So for the carbon here, uh, we have three electron groups, so we need three orbitals. So we're going to take the, the S, the P, and the P. So we take these, we mix them together, we hybridize them, and we get three equal energy sp2 hybridized orbitals so that indicates that this is sp2 hybridized and if you look at this carbon here this other central atom it's got the same bonding pattern we got two chlorines we got a carbon it's got three bonding groups so again this carbon is also going to be sp2 hybridized okay now because we have a double bond here that means that we have uh, a sigma bond one sigma bond and one pi bond and just like the picture i drew earlier the pi bond here is not going to allow for rotation so the uh, carbons are not going to be able to rotate. So therefore, these three atoms or these three atoms here, all, well, four atoms, I guess. So these four atoms, this carbon, this carbon, this chlorine, this chlorine are all going to be in the same plane, right? And so because there's no rotation here, then this chlorine, this chlorine and carbon, and this carbon, these are all in the same plane too. So because these two share the same plane, right, and there's no rotation uh, uh, along the axis, that's going to keep these 
atoms from twisting. You can't twist. And so therefore, as far as indicating whether it's linear, planar, or neither, this is going to be a planar molecule because we have here, if I draw the planes, so these three or four atoms, these are all in the same plane. And then if I draw another plane, so this, this green plane here, all of these atoms are in the same plane. So that means that the whole molecule is going to be in the same plane because there's no rotation around that bond. So this would be a planar molecule. Okay, well, now what about this one? So here you can see that there is just a single bond. So there's no pi bond here. So there's no overlapping of unhybridized p orbitals. And so therefore there is free rotation around this bond. We have a sigma bond here. So one sigma bond here. But notice here we have three, we have triple bonds. So here we have two sigma bonds, or sorry, one sigma bond and two pi bonds. So not all, so we have uh, overlapping of the unhybridized p orbitals, but we have two overlapping, right? So in this case, it would look something like this. So I have my nitrogen and my carbon. Oops, let me use a black marker. So I have nitrogen and I have carbon. And so I'm going to have uh, overlap here. Let me use a different marker. So this will be my sigma bond here. So I'll have this one. So we have a... Uh, an orbital here, we have a, a hybrid orbital here. This is going to have overlap there. So there's my sigma bond because it's along the axis. So the overlap is along the axis. That's what makes it a sigma bond. And then if we look at the unhybridized p orbitals, so the unhybridized p orbitals are going to be perpendicular to the to this, right? So they're going to be at 90 degrees and then if I use a different color um, this also is going to be 90 degrees but let's say this is let's say this is the on the y-axis here and then remember the p orbitals are perpendicular to each other unhybridized p orbitals are uh, perpendicular to each other so if I draw this I'm not a great artist but uh, if, if I can draw the perspective here and so here, let me draw that better. I'm trying to make sure that this is kind of going into the board. So this one's kind of going that way. And this one's kind of going that way. And then you've got the P orbital here. So then this would be perpendicular to this. So maybe this would be the Z axis here. These would be in the Z axis. And so you would get here overlap above and below here but then perpendicular to that you're going to get overlap here on the sides so this would be like left right this would be up down and so now you know this is really keeping uh the uh bond here these atoms here can't rotate this these two uh, uh, pi bonds are, are keeping it from being rotating, right? So here, but we do have rotation here because there's no pi bonds there. There's no, there's no overlapping of the unhybridized p orbitals. And so there's going to be rotation here, no rotation here. Um, and so we can then identify what this is going to be. And so notice here that I have one and two groups. Remember, 
the hybridization is going to be dependent on the number of groups. Now, let me let me write here. So this is going to be planar, right? We said that was going to be planar. Here, notice that we have one, only two groups on this carbon. So then the the uh, shape here is going to be linear, and also we have two groups here on this carbon, so it's going to be linear here. So that means that all four of these are going to be linear. So this molecule is going to be linear. Okay. Now, what about hybridization? So the carbon here, again, we said two groups. This is going to have one atom and one atom. So this carbon has two atoms bonded to it, two total electron groups. So going back to here, so since we need two, we need two groups, we need, well, we need two hybridized orbitals to uh, bond those groups where the groups of electrons can be housed, if you want to put it in those terms. So since I have two electron groups around this atom, then I'm going to need two atomic orbitals to hybridize to make two molecular or hybridized molecular orbitals. And so I'm going to need the S and the P, right? We start with the S and we move our way to higher and higher orbitals. So I need one S and one P. So if I hybridize that together, then I would get two hybridized orbitals. Remember, the same number of atomic orbitals gives you the same number of uh, molecular hybridized orbitals. So since I'm taking two atomic orbitals, that's going to give me two sp hybridized orbitals so this carbon here is sp hybridized and since this carbon here also has a carbon bonded to it and has a nitrogen bonded to it has two electron groups same thing so that's going to be sp hybridized well what about the nitrogens here same thing here we have one carbon atom, one atom, and one electron group, one lone pair. So we have two electron groups around the nitrogen. So that's also going to be sp hybridized. And that one too is also going to be sp hybridized. So all of them are sp hybridized. So therefore, it's going to be linear. Okay, finally, let's go to here. So again, notice uh, here we have a, 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 a triple bond. So again, we're going to have one sigma bond, which is going to be along the axis. But then we have two other bonds. Those are going to be your pi bonds, the overlapping of the uh, uh, unhybridized p orbitals. And so therefore, we're not going to have any rotation around this bond. So uh, the nitrogen and the and the carbon are not going to rotate. Um, but if you go here to between these carbons, so this carbon only has one sigma bond, one bond, no uh, pi bonds here because it's only a single bond. And so you have free rotation here. So if you have free rotation here, this carbon can rotate and keep rotating. And so that means that these fluorines are not going to be staying in place. Also, uh, you can see from here that this carbon here has one, two, three, four bonding groups, no lone pairs. So because it has four bonding groups, um, that's going to give it a certain hybridization, a certain shape, right? So in this case, um, if we look at the bonds here, the hybridization here again, you have one non-bonding group. You have one bonding group, right? So this is going to be two groups, two electron groups. So therefore, just like with this one here, we have the same situation going on here. That's going to be sp hybridized. And same thing with this carbon. This carbon here has one nitrogen, one carbon. That's it. So that's also going to be sp hybridized and this carbon here 
has this bond here to that carbon, these three bonds to the fluorine. So it's got four electron groups. So in that case, we're going to need four atomic orbitals, mix them together, kind of hybridize them together to get four hybrid orbitals. Again, the number of atomic orbitals you put in is the number of molecular hybridized orbitals that you get out. So here we're going to need four. So here it's going to be the, the S, the P, the P, and the P. So we have our four here. So that's going to be SP3 hybridized. So we're going to get four SP3 hybridized orbitals. And so that means that this carbon is SP3 hybridized. Okay, so what does that tell us about the shape of this molecule? Well, here we have a linear part of the molecule, but because this has four bonding groups to this carbon, this carbon is going to be tetrahedral, right? So because of the bonding groups, this has a tetrahedral shape to it. This has a linear shape. So, and then again, this is, this is rotating, but even if it's not rotating, um, not all of these are going to be in the same plane. So these are going to be linear, but then you could have these in, no, no, you could have one of these in the same plane, but the other two would be outside the plane because again, the tetrahedral structure. So this is neither going to be linear, nor is it going to be planar because um, not all of these fluorines are going to be able to be in the same plane uh, as the other atoms. So this is going to be neither. So neither, neither linear nor planar. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you answer these questions. I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. If this helped you out in any, in any way, then please, by all means, like the video, share the video, hit that like button somewhere over here, somewhere. Look for it. It's there. You can find it. Hit it. Also, do me a favor. Support the channel. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. When you do, make sure you click all, and then that way you'll be, uh, you'll, you'll be notified by all the videos I put out. Finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. If you have a problem or a question that you need help with, or if you have a topic you want me to cover, let me know. I would love to do that for you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.